Thank you. Uh, next we have for you two of Ray's actors, David Polson and the Gang of Toba. They were in... They were in numerous plays of Ray's. Fahrenheit 451, The Martian Chronicles, uh, David was hilarious in The Parrot Who Met Papa with J.C. who's going to be with us later. Um, and Ray loved them both very much. Ray loved the theater. As Bill and I were just saying, it's the best money you can ever lose. <laughs> Ray never made a nickel. He never cared to make a nickel. He did it because he loved it, and he did it as absolutely long as he could. And these two wonderful people have a piece from Fahrenheit 451, which Red, yeah, yep, come on back here. Okay, absolutely. And this play, since there's no, since there's no money involved, the length of the run was entirely based on Ray. It didn't care what the ticket sales were because if you could sell all the damn tickets, you weren't making a nickel. Ray loved this play so much it ran for eight months, 89 performances, and. Uh, these two wonderful folks have a scene from it for us today. Can we talk a little bit about how we know Ray? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Can you stand up? Oh, yeah. yeah sure. That's better. All right. Um, I came on to Fahrenheit uh, with like four days to learn. Hi. That was, this is our chief from the fire. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I came on with like four days to learn it. That was basically the way that Alan Hubs and would work. Would work. Yeah. And, um, Three days, you're doing checkoff. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We did. Uh, um, I met Ray about ten years ago, I guess. Um, I did uh, Martian Chronicles. Oh, no, no. At first, thing was Leviathan. Yeah. Yes, I was his quell, which was Queequeg, his version of Queequeg. Um, and I, uh, I, Ray was so freaking awesome. Like, he would come to as many shows as he could, and then he'd take the entire... Uh, theater out for Indian food afterwards. Yeah. He was just such a cool dude. And one time... And you had no choice, by the way. You yes, had to go. Had to go. Um, and uh, one time, one of my favorite, favorite memories of Ray is I, I wrote him this, I wrote this poem about, like, should you love art or should you love a man? And I sent it to Ray, and he sent me back his book, Art in Zen in the Art of Writing. And on the inside, he'd written, Magena, you have to have both something to love, someone to love, otherwise life is meaningless. And he also called me and he was like, what are you doing? Oh, no. <laughs> so, I mean, um, and he was just such a wonderfully loving guy. And I was, Oh, and we were going to do this scene for him. We were going to his house to read to him. Right before. Two days before he passed away, we were supposed to do this. It got canceled once and pushed back, and then we, um, John Sasser helped to organize it. And we were supposed to go, and then uh, we got a phone call the night before saying, you know, Ray, Ray, isn't feeling up to it, and then two days later he passed away. Because McGain and I actually were never on stage together, was the thing. I, I would play Montauk, and then I went to do a film, and she came back from a film, and then she's playing Mildred. So Ray would always always ask to see us together. So that was one of the reasons that, that we were doing it. Yeah, he's like, I want to see you two perform. I never got to see you two do it together. So, so this was supposed to be done for Ray, but he's watching from probably Mars, I'm guessing. Um, but we're going to do it for all of you guys. Yeah. Are we uh, you can stand. I'll, I'll start sitting there. Okay. Why not? Montag, get up. Montag, you're going to be late. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut that thing, shut up! You fell asleep there last night. Montag, it's nine o'clock. Nine? Nine? Yes, nine, hit the floor. No. What do you mean, no? No, I'm sick. You've never been sick in your life. I am sick. You're strong as a bull. Last time you were sick was... You're pale. Yes. You have a fever? Yes, yes. What's wrong? Nothing. Everything. Never mind, I just, uh, I just caught a cold just to chill, that's all. Take care. It's a bit late for that. Call in for me, Millie. Tell them that I'm sick. You've never missed a day. You have to go. I am sick. You can see that, can't you? Here, take my coffee. You'll drink some and then you'll be okay. Go on. There, isn't that better? Cheer up, say good morning. Is it good? Listen, no one calls in sick. They never do. Nobody does it. Nobody's sick anymore. Well, I wonder what I am then. I'm not sick. Well, call in for me. Tell them I'm dead. What? Visitation at noon, burial at sunset, photos at 11. Now that's the kind of talk that'll 
uh, bring them running. What, the truth? No, lies. They don't like lies. They come and take people no. away. They, them, they. Them. You keep talking like that and you'll come and you'll take yourself away. <laughs> oh, Mildred. You don't laugh. I'm not laughing. Can't you see that I'm crying? Montag come and take himself away. The half of them that's true can't stand the half that lies. Or is it the other way around? Stop that. They come. If the house next door can be empty, what? ours can be. They come all the time. The house next door? Yesterday. It's empty. They're gone. What, what do you mean it's empty? Why didn't you tell me? Why? Why? Good riddance. Good riddance? They had their lights on. All of them. All the time. It made me nervous. Some new people are moving in tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, the house is empty. Uh, what about uh, the grandfather, the girl Clarice? How come you know their names? I only saw the old man moving out alone. Maybe the girl had gone already. I looked because it was strange. I saw all the lights going out, all of them, one by one. It was funny after a whole year of nothing but lights. Montag, don't! Mount Hillier Firehouse. Mount Hillier? Montag here, reporting sick. Yes, we already have that data. How could you? Disconnect. Chief Bailey's on his way to see you now. He's coming here. What are you going to do? Time for news. Very important. Must watch. Latest invention will be tested in the next week. All goes well. Functioning full time by year's end. Electrical, computerized. Searcher fast running. For now, it's called only the Hound. Conceived at Montpelier Fire Station, the Hound. Combination of. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? No. What is it? That's me. Coming to get me. I built the hound to hunt myself. You? <laughs> My God. All those years, blueprints, plans, for what? So I could come and take myself away. Well, that's what you said, isn't it? I was just... Joking? Yeah, well, best jokes are real. Nobody's gonna have to come around and fetch Montag. Montag is both beast and prey. Last night at the firehouse, I found myself thinking, what if I inserted my own genetic index card into the hound's muzzle? Here you go, boy! Come and get it! Fetch! Kill! Go! Sit. Down. I was just... No. No pills. No early mornings. No music. No going to sleep at 9 a.m. There's a thing called listening, Mildred. Listen! It's him. I know. You shouldn't have said those things. You shouldn't have talked Mildred, so loud. Really just... He knows you're not sick. Lie down. Pretend. I'm not going to have to pretend. <laughs> thank, thank you for thank letting you. us do that. <laughs> Next, uh, well, first, I want to mention get your raffle tickets, five dollars a piece. Uh, shit, the math. Somebody help me out with the... They've really gotten cheap now. Uh, $5.40 for 10. 20, 10 for 35. If you buy 10, you get a free button. Free button, come on. And, and, uh, you can get right back there and get your raffle tickets. We have some great stuff today. Uh, we're also here, uh, a little later we're going to be doing a book signing for the new Devil's Coattails, edited by this fine man here, and Jason Brock, who is also here. Many of the contributing authors will be here signing, uh, so definitely get one of those. It also has a lot of, most of people are race friends, uh, including his dear friend Norman Corwin. Norman, we lost Norman last year at the young age of 101. Uh, Norman was writing right up till the end, and he's the one who encouraged Ray to go to New York and meet the editors and the publishers. And on that trip, Ray sold two books that you might have heard of, The Martian Chronicles and The Illustrated Map. Uh, so we'll be doing that shortly, but next, Ray's good friend, George, George Clayton Johnson, is here. Yeah. 